Through the Back Loop. Uh, This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, sewing, all kinds of different crafts, and this is the third episode. Um, I had really hoped to get another episode uh, up before now, but I was kind of delayed due to the fact that I did have surgery. Um, uh, I had a hernia surgery that I had put off for many years, and as it turns out, it was completely successful. It went like um, completely textbooked and I was fine within a week. But it just kind of threw me off on, um, you know, my schedule, my crafting and and all that kind of stuff. But made it through with flying colors. So I just wanted to talk about some things that have happened since then, since my recovery. I got to go to Stitches, uh, Southern California, up in L.A., and that was a great experience. Uh, first time at Stitches. So Stitches was kind of dual purpose. I, w- I did want to go to Stitches, but I also wanted to go up to L.A. to visit. Both of my kids live in L.A. They both live with their partners up in L.A. And they live really close together. Um, so it's easy to go up and, and, you know, visit both of them at the same time. So I was a really good mom. And I took a big pan of lasagna up and... Uh, we had dinner the first night on Thursday night, and uh, then and I spent the night with them. And then um, Friday, uh, went to Stitches. So on Friday morning, I took a class. I took a, a class from 9 until 3, and it was called uh, Short Rows with Barry Klein. And this is a handout from the class. Um, he was a fantastic instructor. It was called Simply Short Rows. And I was familiar with short rows, but every time I've done them, I end up not feeling very confident. Like I have to like reteach myself and I'm kind of uncomfortable the whole time I'm doing it because um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. So this was a great confidence builder. I'm I'm really glad I took the class. Um, And he had some little jingles and things that help you remember exactly, you know, whether you slip or... Uh, slip the yarn or uh, wrap and all this other kind of stuff. So that was great. We learned just the regular uh, wrap and turn method. Uh, We also learned the Japanese style short rows. And then he just spent a a good deal of time just talking about, um, you know, when you can use short rows just to make your life easier in knitting and lots of different applications. So that was a, a great class. I'm really glad I took that. And after the class, I, you know, and after lunch and everything, uh, I went to the marketplace and uh, that was cool. I'll be uh, posting some pictures at the end of this, Um, just some of the vendors. It's just a really colorful, vibrant, um, beautiful um, display of of sweaters and and inspiring projects for for people and uh, just endless amounts of yarn and you know, anything to do with knitting or crocheting. So that was really cool. And I uh, actually have a little haul here um, that I'll share with you. I think one of my favorite parts of going to the vendor market was just uh, becoming familiar with some of the shops up in LA. You know, I'm two hours away down south, uh, down in Oceanside. So um, I'm not familiar with those. But as I visit my kids, it'll be great to go up and Um, you know, just check out some different shops. So that was fun. Uh, One of my favorites was the Knitting Tree um, uh, vendor, had a lot of cool stuff, and the Altered Stitch was a cool one. So was uh, the Little Knittery, and there's a few more that I'm not thinking of right now, but that was really exciting for me to just see some of the kind of local to me uh, shops. So uh, as far as um, actually shopping, I um, was inspired by uh, someone on Christy, in Christy Glass Knits podcast talked about how important it is to plan when you're going to go to an event like that. And I loved what she did, so I kind of copied her little notebook. And so I, um, I have this uh, notebook that I always take with me, usually fabric shopping, but this time I took it up to stitches. And I knew that I wanted to get some yarn for the as if, tea. So I had written everything out um, with the suggested yarn that they used, 
um, you know, what I would need, uh, the quantities, what, if it was DK or if it was Aaron. Um, this is a super cool pattern. Um, this part right here is either Aaron or DK, and then this section right here is mohair, so it's really unique. And um, so I knew I wanted to shop for that. And then I knew I also wanted um, some 10.5 needles and also some stitch markers. So this was a great way to keep you kind of focused and not, I mean, many times when I go to a, events like that, it's just so overwhelming and exciting that you don't even, I mean, you just, you kind of get lost in the shuffle. So I'm glad I took this. That was a great tip. Um, and so that's exactly what I bought. Um, first of all, I went to, um, a little shop. I, I, I looked around quite a bit, but I just fell in love with this DK weight, uh, the colors, and it's not exactly showing perfectly. It's kind of a cream with some pinks and kind of dark berry colors, but um, it was really funny. I ended up buying this from this uh, booth. It's called uh, Honey Girl Farms, and um, it was the only shop there that was from Missouri. And I actually grew up in Missouri. My mom still lives in Missouri. So I was like, oh, you know, I got to buy something from her. But I, I actually fell in love with this, um, whether it was from Missouri or not. So um, I bought this. I've got three skeins of it. And then so that was the lower part of that as if tea. And then I shopped around and shopped around and looked. And it took a lot longer to find this mohair to go with it. So this will be... Um, the mohair that's on the top of the uh, of that pattern that I just showed you. So um, I don't know if I'll hold this, but um, anyway, I felt like it really blends in nicely. Um, it's got a lot of the same colors. It almost looks like it was made to to go with these. But um, anyway, so I'm really excited. I've already started working on it. One of the skeins I've already wound into a ball and since this is DK my gosh this is I mean I've just spent a little bit of time on this it's just flying off the needles um, because um, it's you know thicker yarn I've been knitting a lot of with a lot of fingering and um, so this is super exciting I don't think it's going to take that long so this will be the bottom portion of the sweater and then the top will be the mohair it looks like this. I wish that label wasn't on there so you can see a little bit more. But anyway, it's exciting. I'm excited about the pattern and I love knitting with this DK yarn. So, so that was uh, totally successful. And then, um, and along the way, people were so friendly. The, the vendors were like, because I was taking this, you know, around and showing them that I was looking for some mohair to go with this. And didn't know if I wanted a solid or some with colors and was trying to decide and people were so willing to give you suggestions and and uh, and help you and so that was really fun. Um, anyway, working on that and super excited about it. I also um, was able to, I've kind of got stuff stacked around here, I don't know where it is, um, buy the needles that I needed. I wanted these 10.5 needles and I'm not finding them at all. I don't know where they are, um, but um, found those easily, of course. And um, I also, on my list, I won't be able to find that either, I, just some simple stitch markers. I needed some stitch markers that were the easy kind, like the Edison bulb-shaped ones, where you can unclip it real easily to mark decreases and things like that, and that was easy to find. Um, so I, I did find those. Those were two really practical things that that I I wanted. And then I had this in the back of my mind, and this is kind of my splurge. I ended up buying the Knitter's Backpack, uh, and it's canvas. It's a little bit of Ollie hair on it, but um, it's a great little backpack, um, and it's meant for holding yarn. And the cool thing, you can't really tell, but it's like a bucket shape. And so you can lay this on the, the ground and it's kind of like a, it holds all your knitting and then you can easily, you know, knit. 
And so it's like a, a great project bag, but it's also great because it fits right on your back. And I really love the, um, the leather um, wrap on it. The, these straps are just more like cording, but then this part's leather. So that was, I had kind of had that in the back of my mind. Uh, I thought I wanted the blue one, but they were out of the blue one. They said these have been flying off the shelves. So I ended up with this. Uh, it's looking really brown in the picture, but um, on this monitor, but it's um, it's a lighter tan in real life. So that was fun. I'm super excited to have that. And that was, again, kind of a splurge. I didn't know I was going to absolutely buy that one. Um, but anyway, um, compared to a lot of people, that's kind of a small uh, amount of things to buy. But I felt like I needed to to uh, uh, stay focused and not overdo it because I have plenty of other yarn here at the house and, and I didn't want to spend too much. So I was super happy with my purchases and uh, it was great. Um, like I said, it was my first time at Stitches. Uh, many times friends of mine have gone in the past and actually flown and stayed in hotels and, um, and I never felt like I had the money to do that. So it, this was perfect because I got to go up, see my kids, and then also go to Stitches. Um, so it was a great couple of days. Um, I went back on, that was on Friday, and then on Saturday I went back and I had another class called uh, Math for Knitters. Let me see where that is. Get this written down here. Yeah, Math for Knitters, and it was an a hour and a half class. Uh, gosh, I'm, I don't remember the person's name. That's terrible. It's escaping me. But anyway, she did a great job of just all kinds of different math, like all the way from knowing if you have enough yarn um, to, um, you know, changing your gauge, doing design changes, things like that. It was great. I mean, some of it was simple fourth grade math that, you know, if you really thought about it, you know, finding the area and of certain shapes, looking at your schematics and, and deciding from your swatch, you know, how much yarn you've used for that swatch and, you know, square inches and then how many square inches are on the whole project. And it was just really useful um, little tidbits of information that a lot of it I think I will use. So I was glad. Oh, here's the little stitch marker. <laughs> Finally found it. If you can see. Um, it's just the little Edison bulb shaped stitch marker. Oops, there we go. Um, so anyway, that was Saturday. Um, I went later in the day on Saturday and then uh, Saturday during the day I spent it with my kids and we just, we went out to breakfast and, um, uh, and there's just always great places to eat in LA. Went out to breakfast, did a little just driving around sightseeing. We went up through Griffith Park. Um, we went up through Laurel Canyon. We went through a little bit of Hollywood, even though I had seen that recently. So um, that was just fun just to hang out with them and kind of go to some coffee shops and just different little shops. And it was fun. It was fun. So I'm really glad I got to do both of those things. So I, I hung out with my kids during the day on Saturday, went back up to Stitches and took the additional class. Uh, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening and then I drove all the way back home to Oceanside that night so it was a long day and the drive back from LA is never easy or fun um, but I made it safe and sound so it was great so um, oh I forgot to say one of the other things that, that I did uh, Friday night um, was I got to go to the fashion show and I have a little brochure from it somewhere here it is um, so the fashion show was cool um, because, you know, many of the vendors had um, different samples and things. And then they it was fun to see them, you know, on live people, you know, people moving around, you know, walking the, the runway with them on. And it was really cool just to see some of them um, and really easy to in. Uh, make you want to go back and um, buy some of the, those kits and some of that yarn. But, but I was disciplined and I did not do that. But um, anyway, it was definitely worth going. Loved it. Um, 
Then, as far as finished objects that I wanted to show with you today, I finally did finish both of the white thorn socks. Um, I should have them on a blocker or something so you could see them better. But I love this great cable that goes down the center, and then it has the seed stitch on the back. And um, I had shown these before when they were a work in progress, but they're both finished now, both first sock and second sock. And uh, this again was, um, look, uh, this yarn is Casual Fashion Queen and it's called Inner Peace. And uh, I did this on a size one needle. Um, and when I wrote this up in Ravelry, I just said, this took forever, which it really did. I'm used to doing, you know, socks kind of lickety split and not doing all the cable work and, and everything. And man, these took a long time. I felt like I could have knit a sweater in the amount of time that I spent on these socks. But I really do love them and I'm so glad I have them now. Um, but they did take a lot longer than I thought they were going to. So it was a, a project that I was actually really glad when it was finished. And I guess I'm just kind of in the sock mode because um, I made some for my husband too. Uh, I think it's because it's gotten a little bit chillier and so it just, I don't know, I had this sock already here at home. This was from the, the San Diego Yarn Crawl. This yarn is for, from Forbidden Fiber. Blah. Forbidden Fiber and it is, the name colorway is Blue Corn Maze and um, this pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's called Boyfriend Socks. And, you know, he's my boyfriend and my husband. Um, but he had requested that I made them short, which was great for me because then it, it shortened up the project. And um, so anyway, he's already been wearing them and loves them. So that was nice when someone appreciates it so much. Plus, these were fast. I mean, not only were they just plain stockinette stitch, if you can see that, um, but the fact that he wanted them shorter, um, that they didn't take much time at all. And he loves them, especially since the weather's gotten cooler out. So those are finished objects. Um, I think my only real finished objects. Um, what I'm wearing today is something that I had knit a long time ago. This is called Low Tide and it is um, from Tin Can Knits. Um, and I remember I made this from just some yarn that I had in my stash and uh, Anyway, it's, it was fun to knit. This was actually, if I remember right, I think this was just one skein, which was incredible. It was a big skein. I don't remember the, the name of the fiber. Like I said, it's been a few years back. Um, but anyway, um, the socks are my only real finished objects right now. The work in progress is what I already showed you, um, my as if tea, so I'm spending time on that. Um, and then I have some requests for a couple of socks, or not socks, but scarves. So I need to get going on that, uh, some gifting uh, projects for Christmas. Um, so that's pretty much it on knitting. Another thing I've been working on uh, sewing wise, not the wrap dress that I talked about before. I haven't actually touched that at all, but somewhere, oh, here it is. Um, and that's, I actually made a tablecloth for the Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, we are planning on eating outside. I know that sounds really crazy to a lot of people, uh, but here in Southern California, you can do that in, at the end of November. So um, I made a tablecloth for our outdoor table, which was super easy. All you had to do was measure it and hem it. But then probably the trickiest part, and it's not really that tricky, is just the hole. And sorry about that. I was talking about the um, the bias binding that I put around the hole for the umbrella stand. So super easy little project. Uh, like I said, I have not worked on my wrap dress, but I'm hoping to do that sometime coming up. One thing I have here to show, and it's not really spinning, it's just preparing to spin, is that I have been working on, this isn't going to show up at all, 
but I've been working on washing that fleece that I talked about on the last episode where I've had it for two years and it was just feeling horribly guilty about every time I'd see it that it was just sitting there. But I've washed a whole bunch of it. I have probably maybe 20% of it left. So this there's several of these baskets just filled with this fleece. And so I have been accomplishing something on the spinning front, even though it's it doesn't feel like it's, you know, anything too big. So I've been working on that too. Uh, and that's pretty much um, all I have for today. I uh, just want to send my condolences to all of the Californians that have dealt with tragic um, wildfires and um, you know my my heart is is with them. Uh, we feel somewhat threatened here. We are in the red zone as well. Um, last year we did have to evacuate this year. We have not had to so far. but my heart does go out to just unbelievable um, things that are that families and, and people are dealing with. I, I feel terrible about that. Um, I wanted to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, I'll conclude with just some photos and a little bit of video of what I talked about previously, and uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.